Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art behind redstone. I'm your host, Amle Du, and in this video, we're going to build rollable dice that works both in Java and in Bedrock. And best of all, you can have up to nine numbers on each of the dice. Now, of course, you can build a single dice or you can build two of them together controlled by the same button. Pushing the button will roll the dice and give you your random number. And all of the numbers will have the exact same percentage chance of happening, you know, just like a dice. I do already have a redstone dice video for Bedrock only, but Berumato Quay wanted me to make one that works in Java as well. Sorry if I mispronounced the name, but thank you so much for leaving a comment and a request. The materials required will heavily depend on how big you want to make it. The ones you see here are for a single six-sided dice. Now, I didn't actually count the redstone dust or the blocks, but you will also need some way to identify the different numbers, so banners or signs. The build area for a single six-sided dice is 9 by 9, but how many numbers you have will change the length of the farm, and you can always duplicate it to have two dice controlled by the same button. If you want two six-sided dice, you will need a 17 by 9 area. And since both dice will share where that andesite line is, you could always build one dice now and then add another one later on whenever you see fit. But we're going to start off on the front in the center by placing a block, a bulb, and a wooden button. Now depending on how many numbers you want this to have, we're going to go over by that many blocks, one block away from the bulb. I'm going to go ahead and place my number banners so that we know that this is for a six-sided dice. But if you want more or less numbers, just make more or less of these slices. Each slice is exactly the same. But we need comparators pointed into the blocks under the lamps, solid blocks behind those comparators, and then droppers facing the back next to those. Three blocks behind the droppers, we need to have a row of solid blocks. So two blocks of air in between the droppers and this new row. Now we also need redstone torches on the side of these, then while facing the back, we need to place droppers in front of each torch so that these new droppers are facing into the old droppers. So the back row is facing toward the front, and the front row is facing toward the back. Now in each of the back droppers, we need to place a single item. It doesn't matter what this item is, if it's stackable or non-stackable, we just need to place one item into all six of the back droppers. Now go around to the back and place a row of blocks diagonally down from all of this, with repeaters facing the front with no additional delay. Then a row of solid blocks here on the back, diagonally up from the repeaters, and then solid blocks on top of the repeaters, in front of those, and then on top of the redstone torches. This section that we're building is a Java-friendly item sorter, but we need to place redstone dust on the back three blocks, all the way across. Then we need to turn around and face the back, and place comparators on these front blocks so that they are facing in that orientation. Now over here, next to the backmost droppers, we're going to place a temporary block and then two droppers facing up. Then on top of those, we need a dropper facing toward all of the stuff that we just built. So the bottom two are facing up, and the top one is facing toward those comparators. Now we need a hopper going into the side of that bottom dropper, and then a row of hoppers pointed into that one that we just placed. Then jump back here so that we can place hoppers pointed into this front row of hoppers. Make sure all of those are pointed into the front row. Now we need to place hoppers that are pointed into these comparators. And if you're having trouble aiming at the comparators, you can always place temporary blocks instead. But just make sure that these are pointed toward the back toward those comparators, like so. Now we need to build the middle section. So come back over here to your bulb, place a solid block next to it and diagonally down from that so that we can have a comparator that is looking at the bulb with an observer looking down at that comparator, a solid block on top of and next to that observer, then redstone dust from the top all the way across. Then come back over here and place two solid blocks next to this top one, so that we can then turn around and place a repeater on a three tick delay right here, so poke that repeater two times, then place two dust coming out of that repeater going to the top of that dropper. Now come down here and place an observer looking at this comparator, then a solid block with redstone dust on top. Then place a solid block next to that torch, so that it's diagonally down from that bottom dropper. Place a comparator that is looking at that bottom dropper. Then place an observer that is looking at that comparator, like so. Then a solid block behind that observer. Then diagonally down from that solid block. Then forward by one, then diagonally down. Then place two redstone dust on these back two blocks. 
and a repeater with no extra delay in that hole. Now we need to load the filters on our item sorters. So this top row of hoppers are your filters. So you need six different stackable items. And we're gonna place one of these six into each of these hoppers. And we need to have a single item in the last four slots and then 43 items in the first slot. Now two of those items will fall through, so you will be left with 41. So another way that you could load this is one in the last four slots and then 41 in the first slot and then add two more of that item. You want to be left with 41 items in the very first slot and two of them that have fallen into the machine. And this is because this top dropper up here should contain one of all six of the items that you loaded in. And then these bottom hoppers underneath your filters should always have one item stuck in there. So be sure to double check that your top dropper has six different items, that the hoppers under your filters have a single item, and that your filters have 41 and four. Now all that's left is to build the delivery system. So place powered rails on top of all of the hoppers except for the second one, place a minecart with chest right there in the front, then get a block diagonally up from that powered rail with a lever on the front and then turn that lever on so that it powers the rails. And that's it, we are now totally done. So poke the button to make sure that it works. The minecart should move back and forth and it should deliver a single item which should trigger one of your numbers. One thing to note is the reason I recommend using a wooden button and not a stone button is that if you spam the button as fast as you possibly can, depending on how many numbers you have on your dice, there is a chance that one of the items will not end up in the minecart with hopper and then will get lost or despawn, and you don't want that to happen. So just be sure to avoid sitting there spam clicking the button. But if we want to add a second dice, all we have to do is mirror everything that we just built over on this side. You know, just sharing the center section. So we'll just, you know, go over by blocks and then bulbs and then place comparators looking at this front. You know, we're just gonna copy everything that we just did except for the middle section, which will just be shared. You know, so we're still gonna place a dust on top of that dropper. Then down here, we still need a block next to that torch with a comparator on it. Then an observer looking at that comparator with a solid block behind it. You know, it's exactly the same. The right and the left side are both exactly the same. It is just the middle part that is shared by both. And if for some reason you don't want to use number banners, you could always, of course, just use signs and write the number on the sign. Another idea is using item frames with items inside to have a random item selector rather than a random number selector. But if you do want the number banners, here are the patterns for you to copy. Just take a screenshot, copy the layers, and choose whatever colors you want. But that's all we got for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you did or didn't like about the video, what's on your mind, or if you have any questions or requests, and I will do my best to help you out. And a big shout out to all of my subscribers, all of my supporters, and to you. Thank you so much for watching and giving your support. It is because of all of you that I can continue making these videos. So just know that you are totally awesome, and I hope to see you again soon. But until then, I've been your host, Amala Du, sharing a redstone trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.